Taking over the controls of a formidable fighter and flying it across the sky towards a target is not a job for faint-hearted individuals. In fact, it takes a lot of boldness and guts to remain focused in a cockpit, knowing any mistake could lead to a failed mission or having in mind that you can be shot from the sky at any time. For this reason, pilots are regarded with respect. It is not every day you come across a woman in the cockpit of a fighter, but Amy Rebel Fiedler, amongst other women, is an exception. Who is Amy Fiedler? What supersonic fighter did she pilot? Join us as we go into details about the United States female pilot that showed off an extreme vertical takeoff. Captain Amy Fiedler, a U.S. Air Force female pilot, assumed the role of the F-16 demonstration pilot during the 2022 Heritage Flight Training Conference. On this day, she showcased the combat capabilities of one of the most feared multi-role fighter aircrafts. Before she joined the Air Force, she was a collegiate athlete at South Dakota State University and a civilian flight instructor who had spent thousands of hours in the cockpit. She transitioned from instruction to military service in 2016, graduating from the Air Force's officer training school. After her graduation, she completed her fighter training in 2018 and served in Korea and with the 20th Fighter Wing at Shaw Air Force Base, where she is currently stationed in Sumner, South Carolina. This is where she leads the eight-member team at more than 20 air shows annually. She mentioned that her favorite aircraft is the F-16 because of its speed, power, and some of its other unique features. In her words, she referred to the F-16 as a tactical jet that has everything a fighter jet should. Following her assignment in Korea, she was allocated to the 55th Squadron at the 20th Fighter Wing as an operational F-16 flight lead. It was during this assignment that she was selected as F-16 fighter demo team pilot for the 2022 season. Let us take a look at the features and capabilities of the lethal fighter jet that Captain Amy Fiedler flew on September 1, 2022. The F-16 Fighting Falcon is a fast and versatile fighter jet that was developed by the U.S. company General Dynamics for the Air Force. This fighter jet was initially designated for flying in the daytime and engaging in combat, but over time it became a force to be reckoned with and it can fly at any time regardless of the weather. Since its development in 1976, more than 4,600 of these fighters have been produced. And even though the United States Air Force does not purchase the F-16 anymore, they are still upgrading its features to sell to other countries. In 1993, the company that was in charge of developing these aircrafts sold its business to Lockheed Corporation. The F-16 is one of the first fighter jets to make use of a smart flight control system. This feature helps it move around quickly. The jet also has a gun inside and 11 other places to attach other weapons and equipment. It is a fast and flexible aircraft, especially with only one engine. It's smaller and lighter than older jets, but uses advanced technology like special controls and computer systems to do intricate maneuvers. It can do hairpin turns and fly at supersonic speeds. The F-16 is the first aircraft made to handle G-forces on the pilot, being able to fly faster than two times the speed of sound. The aircraft is not expensive to build and does not cost as much to maintain than other older fighter jets in the U.S. fleet. The body of the jet is made with a special kind of aluminum, steel, composites, and titanium that allows it to sustain G-forces. The F-16 was made to be an inexpensive alternative jet for the military. Parts like flaps and fins use a mix of aluminum honeycomb and special coatings, which also drive the cost down. Unlike older planes, there are fewer points that need lubrication, fewer places where fuel lines connect, and fewer parts to replace. Most of the panels on the plane can be reached without needing any special equipment, thus making it a great addition to the military. Even though the original specs said the F-16 should last for 4,000 flight hours and handle forces of 7.33 G with 80% fuel inside, the engineers at General Dynamics decided to make it even stronger. They designed the F-16 to last for 8,000 flight hours and handle forces of 9 Gs even with a full tank of fuel. The early F-16 planes could have up to six heat-seeking missiles called aim Nide Sidewinder on rail launchers on each wingtip. They also had radar-guided missiles called AIM-7 Sparrow in the mix of weapons. The upgraded versions of this jet can use the AIM-120 AMRAAM missile, and many United States jets place the missile on their wingtips to make the wings of the jet more stable. The fighter jet can carry different types of missiles, bombs, and rockets for any type of mission. Another outstanding feature is its electronic configuration, navigation systems, targeting systems, and fuel tanks on nine hardpoints, six of which can be found under the wing. Two are placed on the wingtips, and the last one can be found under the jet's body. In addition to this, there are two more spots under the fighter jet where the sensors and radar spots can be fixed. The F-16 has a 20mm Vulcan cannon inside it and is positioned to the left of the cockpit. The cockpit is designed to give the pilot a good view of his environment, and the canopy is made from special material 
that allows the pilot to see through even at a 40 degree angle on the side and 15 degrees in front. The feature is unique to this fighter jet and might rarely be found on other jets. In addition to this, the pilot also makes use of a side stick controller, which is similar to the engine throttle to fly the jet. Instead of making use of the regular rudder pedals that can be found in older jets, the F-16 makes use of conventional ones. Various switches and controls can be found on the throttle, and this design makes it easier for the pilot to reach and control the aircraft during complex maneuvers without taking his hands off the control. When the pilot applies pressure on the side stick, it sends electrical signals through the body of the fighter jet, and this helps in moving the jet in whatever direction the fighter wants it to go. The F-16 has a special display called a heads-up display that shows important flight and combat information right in front of the pilot without blocking their view. This helps the pilot stay aware of what's happening around them without looking down inside the cockpit. Other information is shown on multifunction displays. The left one mainly shows radar and maps, while the right one shows details about the engine, landing gear, flaps, and fuel and weapons. The first engine that was fixed in the F-16 was the Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW200 afterburning turbofan. However, during the testing process, the developers encountered some issues like compressor stalls and rollbacks. This is a situation where the power in the engine suddenly stops, then becomes idle. To solve the issue with the jet's engine, the Air Force ordered F-16 pilots to stay within a distance that allows them to glide back to the base without engine to avoid sudden engine failure, which would lead to a catastrophic situation. By 2012, the USAF had allocated $2.8 billion for the upgrade of about 350 F-16s while waiting for the F-35 to become operational. Shameless plug, keep an eye out for our upcoming video on the F-35. Back to the F-16, one significant upgrade in this lethal jet is the installation of an auto ground collision avoidance system to minimize controlled flight into terrain incidents. The scope of upgrades is limited by onboard power and cooling capacities, often requiring the addition of more power-hungry avionics. Lockheed won numerous contracts to upgrade F-16s for foreign operators, while BAE systems also offered various F-16 upgrades. These upgrades involved orders from South Korea, Oman, Turkey, and the U.S. Air National Guard. However, BAE lost the South Korean contract due to a price breach in November 2014. In 2012, the USAF awarded the total upgrade contract to Lockheed Martin. Upgrades included Raytheon's center display unit, which replaced several analog flight instruments with a single digital display. In 2013, budget cuts raised concerns about the completion of the Combat Avionics Programmed Extension Suite, part of the secondary program such as Taiwan's F-16 upgrade. The possibility of canceling CAPES led Lockheed Martin to propose a fixed-price upgrade package for foreign users. Although CAPES was not included in the Pentagon's budget request for 2015, the United States Air Force indicated that the upgrade package would still be offered to Taiwan's Republic of China Air Force. Another female pilot who flew an unarmed F-16 is Heather Renee Penny. This talented lady is a defense policy expert at the Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies in Virginia. She is famous for her role as a United States Air Force lieutenant who was one of the two F-16 pilots. Penny was the only woman in her fighter pilot training class and the only woman in her fighter squadron, the 121st Fighter Squadron of the District of Columbia Air National Guard that is stationed at Joint Base Andrews. She was transferred to the 201st Airlift Squadron in 2009. The squadron duty was to provide short-notice worldwide transportation for the executive branch, congressional members, Department of Defense officials, and high-ranking United States and foreign personnel. Penny, who was the first lieutenant at the time, was ordered into the air in her fighter jet alongside Mark Seville's aircraft at Andrews Air Force Base as the terrorist attacks were unfolding on September 11, 2001. They were ordered to stop United Flight 93 before it reached the Washington airspace, but because of the urgency of the situation, there was not enough time to lead the jet with live ammunition. The only weapon that was available on the jet was the minimal 100 rounds of ball ammunition that is always carried by the aircraft to maintain trim. The only way to accomplish the mission would have been to collide with the target. Penny and Mark were unable to intercept United 93 because it crashed 30 minutes before they could even take off from the base. If it had not crashed, it still would have been hard to intercept because it would have reached Washington 15 minutes prior to them being airborne. Although there was no longer the need to fly, Penny mentioned in a Washington Post that she was willing to down their target without ammunition even if she lost her life in the process. According to her, there are things in the world that are more important than ourselves. She also stated that humans belong to something greater than themselves. Penny's dedication to protect the nation even at the expense of her life was a testament to her tenacious nature and brought her to the limelight. Aside from this, 
This woman also served two tours of duty in the Iraq War. In 2006, she joined the famous company Lockheed Martin as a director of the United States Air Force Superiority Programs while still serving part-time with the Air National Guard. During her time working at the company, she spent most of it working on the F-35 project, a fighter jet which is now renowned for its unrivaled capabilities. After leaving Lockheed Martin Company, she joined the think tank as a defense policy expert. Her time in service did not go without awards and honors. In 2011, she received the Emerging Voice Award from the Purdue University College of Liberal Arts and the Purdue Alumni Association. She was also given the 2017 Outstanding Aviator Award from the Wings Club Foundation and the International Aviation Women's Association. This wraps up the details of the United States female pilot who showed off extreme vertical takeover. What do you think about women in the aviation sector? Let us know in the comments and if you learned anything new from our video. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Valkyrie Defense for more videos.